Hello my soccer universe, <laughs> what a crazy day it was in Serie A yesterday, uh, Covid chaos, absolute Covid chaos all around. Uh, it was even so crazy, I, I'm actually proud of my background because I, uh, although I did the calculations I probably could have put up uh, all the teams because there have been actually some movements, Bologna by not playing actually gained a little bit but you know, uh, don't take it for what, what it is, um, mainly because of the teams around uh, losing, so that helped them, so whatever. But then I said, no, I cannot put up these teams, and I just checked, um, can I make a background with only teams that played, actually? And yes, I have eight, eight of the teams that played, I have, so they are right behind me, and then five I actually could double up quite proud <laughs> of that achievement of mine and yeah three million shirts uh da, 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 one here one here and one here and they're all the same season so kind of is all fitting in a way but yeah before we get into the few games that happened eh, it was a few games i mean more than half the games did did, did, did happen what actually uh did happen uh is the fact that in italy and it was clear already from the day the day for there are certain squads that will not be allowed to travel by the local health authorities, which take precedence over Serie A, and Serie A has not really made the rules up front. So Serie A is saying, no, uh, this is not, you know, we have uh, we have no rules in place for saying as that many players are out. And, and so, so the game is happening. So uh, the team that is not affected by COVID actually needs to uh, go to, to the ground, which is okay if you're a home team. But in case of Inter, they had to travel all the way to Bologna, show up there in order that, to have potentially the three points secured, which is madness in many ways. I would have uh, the same thing happened. So, I mean, for me, this was an egregious one. I'm looking at the other one. I mean, Torino could not travel to Atalanta. Atalanta showing up at their own ground, okay, is not a big thing. Salernitana uh, also did not show up, but Venezia had to travel all the way down to the south. And then Udine, again, Fiorentina was at home. But uh, it's an absolute farce to have teams go that far. I mean, isn't that also against COVID protocol that you want to avoid mingling? And then, you know, uh, you want to reduce the capacity to 50%. Uh, but there's no social distancing whatsoever. I mean, if you saw the games yesterday, there were more empty spots, but, uh, you know, the fans were crowd crowding game. But this is an issue we saw in other leagues as well. So um, I find it, it's a farce in many, many ways. Uh, I think what's, what's even bigger farce is, uh, and by, I was happy that the game happened. Napoli, I think the authority of the training ground, it's that granular in Italy, said they cannot travel, but the one for a stadium said they can. And so there were three three players that, okay, we go anywhere. And I think in Turin, they actually cleared them. Go figure. Go figure. Uh, I know uh, historically this just tells the story that Italy has always been, uh, for the most of the history, um, a country that was more or less split in small countries. And now there is no unified uh, way of dealing with it. And yeah, it is frustrating because as a Serie A fan, I really would have loved to have an entire game, uh, day of games. I've almost got it anyway, but it's still, it is a bit frustrating to have it this way. Uh, and also the short side is we had the whole thing happening uh, 15 months ago when Napoli couldn't uh, travel to Turin. Then Juve was awarded the win. Then uh, Napoli, of course, uh, went uh, against that, uh, lots of lawyers, and then they had to play that game anyway. And I just foresee the same thing. Why doesn't Serie A step in and say, okay, those games are called off, we spare you all the expenses, and so on. The game is called call off if a team is uh, going, is not uh, about to show. And uh, we'll figure it out from there on not go through this whole spiel with uh, a team has to travel to the ground, blah, blah, blah. And then you see it on TV, uh, awaiting arrival of a uh, away team or home team. Please, please. This is, uh, is not even great TV in many ways. So, yeah. Uh, and also, I mean, I will give you the scheduled games for the weekend at the end of this video, but uh, it's anyone's guess 
what will happen, what will not happen at this point. However, the games that did happen actually threw up some really interesting storylines. And uh, so let's go right into it. Um, Calgary winning at Sampdoria, really does that, that was an early shocker. Calca and Calgary uh, needing every point. Uh, Lazio against Empoli, a highly entertaining 3-3 draw that I only half watched, unfortunately. Uh, Empoli having already a 2-0 lead after 8 minutes and Immobile pulls one uh, back. Uh, the game really teetering. I mean, Lazio he, he, he hitting the woodwork. Before the half, then you think they make the turn to turn around when Milinkovic Savic actually gets the equalizer in the 66th. Uh, but Empoli come right back. Uh, Di Francesco giving a go-ahead goal. Then... Um, a crazy sequence at the end. Lala is really pressing for the equalizer. Scoring an equalizer. Handball. Uh, Patrick more or less right on the line. But having uh, a handball there. Uh, then they get a penalty. Giro Mobile has his uh, a shot saved. And then in the stoppage time, Milinkovic Savic actually gets the equalizer uh, for Empoli. Uh, a little sign of life for uh, Genoa, who take an early lead uh, in, um, yeah, it was not Sassuolo, <laughs> it is Regina, uh, through that death from Perade equalized, but then uh, Genoa really hold on for dear life and get it. Uh, and then the game, uh, the match day, ended with actually two really big clashes. Uh, Milan-Roma, when I saw the Milan lineup, especially... Um, I mean, Tonali and Kroonic in midfield, I thought this would work, and Tonali was the best player on the, on the field, there's no doubt. But the defense with Gabi and Kalulu had me a little bit worried, to be honest. But for some reason, it actually worked. Milan, very early on, it was all down to Roma, but basically shooting themselves in the foot early. Uh, the first one, there was a nice shot from uh, Theo Hernandez far out where Tammy Abraham just goes a little bit like that out and uh, it kind of hits the the ball, hits his arm. And it's not easy to see. It's, I think the best angle was from the back where you can see actually the ball takes a little deflection. And that deflection probably also enabled then Rui Patricio to save it. And so it's called a penalty. But it took a while until this came and then she Giroud steps up and may, may exit 1-0. And I thought, yeah, that, that's a good way to calm, calm the nerves. And then Roma again uh, imploded, a horrible back pass is intercepted by Giroud, who then puts it against the post, uh, ball falls to Messias, who puts it in 2-0 Milan. I thought, thank you, easy way to go. And, you know, I, yes, I was celebrating it's Milan, but you know that Roma is kind of my second team in Italy, so uh, this is always a, a tough game. But uh, it is very well defined, Milan ahead of Roma for me. So, yeah. Uh Milan had largely controlled the game. Roma actually uh, took a while to get going, but then they get an equal. I mean, they had then some chances uh, later on, and they got an equalizer through Tam Tam uh, with a Pellegrini assist, hoping for an offside call. It was never happening because there were two Milan players uh, uh, even ahead of Abraham. So, yeah, uh, it was, was a fine goal, and the game went kind of, yeah, okay. It's going to be nervy, and Roma then had the, ch uh, had the chances uh, early in the second half. But I would say uh, right around the 70th, 60th, 70th minute, um, it, 65th, it kind of turned towards Milan again. Roma just could not keep it up. And there was another uh, thing happening that uh, Castop and Theo Hernandez, like in Rome, when Theo Hernandez stays it on this time Theo Hernandez really did it to Karstorp. And Carson was for a long time on a yellow, um, uh, or, or you know, there were a few bus stops uh, already in, uh, before the half. It was, a, I think, the first half had a 10 minute stoppage time almost. So uh, there were a lot of bus stops there already, and Carson got, uh, got booked. The second half was teetering on the uh, red card, and he got in the 74th. Uh, from that free kick, uh, Florenzi, wonderful free kick, onto. Uh, the corner of the wood, wood, woodwork. Ah, I, f I forgot Brahim Diaz also with a great shot hit the woodwork. And so I'm thinking, yeah, can you just put the game away because you keep Roma in the game. But, you know, with a man down, he brings on, I mean, he had already brought, uh, brought on a Leo. Ibrahimovic came kicking him out. Conti for some reason. That uh, was so, so, so surprised. And that paid dividends then because uh, from um, a goal kick from uh, Mignon. 
Ibrahim is just chests it into Leao's way and he runs clear on the goal, makes it 3-1. Should have been 4-1 because Mancini gives up another penalty, but Ibra, he should not take penalties anymore. He sees his effort saved. 3-1 win for Milan. Uh, it was a... I, I don't want to say it was a great game, but it was an exciting game in many ways because it went up and down. There were many things happening. Two red cards, many goals, twice the woodwork. Um, I just feel, in a way, maybe the 3 1 was all, all, all right, but he could have done something for the goal difference. Roma, um, just not quite there. Um, and, you know, we see with AFCON how it will pay off for Milan, uh, whether um, uh, Benazir and especially Cassie will be the big misses. And then in the evening, Juve Napoli uh, was also an enter not a great game, but an ent entertaining game. I was a little bit miffed that now Napoli show also been red, but I thought, yeah, their home kit is blue with white pants and probably the, yeah, whatever. Uh, and yeah, I can't get on board now with the red because I know on the Maradol they also had red kits, but it looked a little bit weird. Uh, early exchanges were definitely in Juve's favor, but then I think Napoli came right around. I uh, had a few chances already. Uh, mostly, you know, a blocked shots, but uh, from good position. But then Therese Merksens gives Nap 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 the lead, and I thought they very well deserved that lead at the halftime because they were largely a better team. And about the tight end changes uh, in the second half, Chiesa gives Juve the equalizer, then Juve was pressing more, and Napoli was very, very content with that draw. Uh, wasting time left and right, and yeah, I, wouldn't, I should also say. Uh, the Insigne situation, who actually did not play that badly, um, but Insigne is now leaving Napoli at the end of the season and he's not going to any other Serie A team or any other European team, no. He's going to MLS to Toronto FC, which I find a remarkable turn of events in many ways. The game finishes 1-1. One, one. Um, Juve probably had overall the better chance. There was a huge McKenny miss early on. Then Moise Ken laid on, had a header. Um, as I said, Napoli saw the writing on the wall and Allegri threw everything at Napoli that they could. But in the end, it was a 1-1. One, one. Probably the right result. Napoli better in the first half. Juve better in the second half. So it ends in a... 1-1. One, one. Uh, the table at the moment uh, is very uneven. Um, I did not, because I don't know whether this will not be counted 3-0. I just said that these games game games are played. Uh, it was big. The win for Milan was kind of big because, you know, you're now within one point of Inter, although Inter having a game, a game in hand, but that always helps a little bit. Um, Napoli, the draw between now and W also played very nicely into uh, Milan's and Inter's hands. Uh, so there's a little bit more distance there as well. Um, Fiorentina fall, go ahead of Roma despite having no played. That was also interesting. Yeah, goal difference happens. And on the bottom, Cagliari now ahead of Genoa, but uh, Spezia and Venezia? Maybe you gotta watch out a teeny uh, bit if uh if you will not get caught because for uh despite Kalia and Jenner still having a little bit of a distance maybe um a second half could turn things around for you and as i said the next round uh i don't know what will be played so uh this is what's scheduled i would definitely say that torino fiorentina is not looking uh well uh what else uh, we had Salentana, will probably not happen. Uh, Bologna is playing Cagliari, that definitely is in doubt. So you see already in Udine against Atalanta, I think could be the same thing. Uh, we do have, uh, again, two big games, Roma, Juve and Inter Lazio. So I think that's a very interesting. Uh, Milan playing against Venezia, yeah, should be a nice one as well. I'm glad Serie A is back. I'm not happy about all the drama around it. In any case, let me know your thoughts on what was ha happening. I did not turn on the light for, uh, on purpose because uh, it's a dark time for Serie A. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!